Hello everybody! This is a live plant unboxing and setup video. I wanted to show you what you can expect to receive when you purchase a plant from Rare Shrub. I do also own the domain salviadivinormplants.com and I think I'm going to be pivoting to using that as my main website over time. Uh, Rare Shrub will still be active, but with an increased grow room capacity, um, I can, like on these shelves, I can, I can really grow a lot of plants. I can, I can grow at least 200 plants a month. And um, so I'm really hoping to increase sales and stuff of that nature. So I suspect that owning salvagedivinormplants.com will help with SEO. Anyway, I wanted to show you what um, you can expect to receive. A lot of people wonder what's the box going to look like. It's going to look like this. It's just a priority mail flat rate box. Sometimes when it's really, really hot, um, like it is right now, uh, I don't do this very often, but when it's really, really hot, I do this. I write on the box, live plant, please leave in shade. Um, the return label is going to say from rareshrub.com, and when I mail them with salvia divinorm plants, I'm also going to put it as rareshrub.com. A lot of people are wondering what the box is going to look like when they receive it, and it seems that some people really care about discretion, even though I shipped to only legal states, which is fun. Um, anyway, I wanted to show you what the plant will look like, so... We're going to go ahead and take a razor blade, and uh, I guess you could use anything to open this. I prefer razor blades. Um, be really careful with these. These are sharp. You can cut yourself, and it will hurt. I'll put that down for now. So up top, you're going to remove... Sometimes I use two, um, but we're going to do this. Now, this one, I didn't put a baggie on. Uh, normally I put a little baggie to prevent any water from seeping out and like destroying the box, but the baggie is the bottom. So we're going to take out the plant. This is what it looks like. Um, it's a lot of tape. It's going to suck to open. I, this is pretty much version 1.0 of packaging for the last like two years. And it works so well that I just never changed it. Um, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, but I will be in time experimenting with packaging that is less annoying to open. Now, for this part, you're going to want to be really careful because sometimes the leaves... Now, the whole plant is basically coiled up in this, in this top pot. And you don't want to cut too far in because you can cut a leaf. Um, the main stem is usually in the center, so it's not really an issue. But um, you're going to want to be really careful and just go and cut the tape very gently around all four corners, or four centers. And then be really careful with this part. A lot of people just like rip the top off. Um, you're gonna wanna be pretty gentle. Just kinda shimmy the plant out. And there she is. Now the leaves are going to be a little bit curled um, this is just kind of a side effect of the fact that they're crammed in this pot. Like I said, I will be experimenting with other shipping methods, but this isn't really anything to be concerned about. Um, the leaves do pretty much straighten back up, uh, if you just give them a little bit of guidance, as well as pretty much straighten back up on their own over time. It's me from the future. This is the plant two days later. The leaves have straightened out. It's actually grown a little bit, as you can see. It shouldn't have any of that on there. Um, I talked about that in one of my last videos. Having that on there can be a little bit problematic over time. You can actually kind of see some of what I talked about, the sediment buildup kind of stuff. Uh, the camera's not focusing. But I just wanted to show you what the plant looks like a few days into the future. 
uh, the leaves are straightened out and she's growing well. Then the next thing we're gonna do, you would be surprised the amount of people that just leave the plant like this. They think, okay, good to go. Uh, I get a, lot, a good like 5% of people just leave the plant exactly as is and it's always funny. So you're gonna take the razor blade and go around the edges once again and cut the tape holding in the piece of cardboard. The piece of cardboard is there to secure the paper towels and the paper towels are in there to secure the soil. Once again, be very careful with sharp objects. You will cut yourself, it will hurt. Don't blame me. Um, I'm gonna go across here because there's this empty space in here. And then this piece just comes off. Comes off like that. Again, be really careful um, taking off the paper towels. Sometimes they can swell and be pretty close to the main stem. So we're gonna go like this and take them off and go like this. Watch out for the soil because it will get everywhere. Okay. The tape is kind of annoying. Uh, it's not that big a deal. It comes off really easily. So there's that. You might get a piece that's like kind of stuck. Um, and there she is. So this is a salvia div norm plant. Um, now I'm going to show you what kind of lighting I use. So I've described on my website, uh, I use I use T5 shelving LED lights. Don't use expensive cannabis grow lights. It is wholly unnecessary. For some reason, this light is kind of underpowered. Um, you're going to be getting some bars, maybe. That's just an effect of the lighting on the camera. And so this light is actually a little bit underpowered for my salvia. So it'll work fine, but like for some reason this shelf down here, it's way brighter. But just as an example, um, you pretty much want the lighting about this far. Um, here is, I should have brought my tape measure. But here's like a gallon of water for scale. Want it about that much away from the top of the plant. And I usually say about two feet. Then what you're going to do is uh, you're going to use a timer. I use these digital timers. You can set the time. They also have the little turny ones. Um, if you don't have the ability to use a whole shelf shop light thing like this, you can also use these. These are called clamp lights. You can pick these up at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, while you're there, get one of those timers. The uh, digital ones are a lot nicer. You can get them online um, for like maybe twelve to fifteen dollars. But the uh, turny ones that you like push in are a lot cheaper. So as far as clamp lights go, I prefer the bigger clamp light to the smaller one because the bulb just kind of sticks out of the smaller one and you see it more. It just kind of bugs you. So. The light bulb that I use and recommend everybody to get is the cheapest twist-in LED light bulb. This one, for example, is Tywin, T-I-W-I-N brand. It's an 11-watt light bulb. It's 5,000 Kelvin. That's the color spectrum you want. You want it to say bright white, 5,000 Kelvin. It might not say bright white, but anything that says daylight, the wrong color spectrum. That's usually like three to 4,000 Kelvin. You don't want that. You want a bright white LED light bulb. Um, if you're going to go with these ones, make sure you get the ones with like the plasticky base. The ones with the like, that's plastic for the most part, all this. There's one that looks exactly like this that's made of um, ceramic, 
do not get the ceramic ones. They burn hot. They will overheat your clamp light and just generate a lot of heat. These are a very low heat generating bulb and they work really, really well. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you how I make a humidity dome. Uh, my website talks about it, but a lot of people seem to struggle with it. So I'm going to pause the video, go get the dome that I'm talking about, and then I'll come back. So what you're going to do is take a gallon of water. You can use any brand. I like the shape of the crystal geyser bottles, as well as the fact that they're relatively thin plastic. A lot of other bottles are, um, they're shaped more like, uh, they're thinner, they're more cylindrical, and you don't really want that. It's just kind of hard to work with. So you're gonna wanna make sure you drain all of the water out of the thing before you, before you do that. So I just drained it. And then what you're gonna do, these are really good scissors, by the way, Milwaukee uh, scissors. They're really nice, highly recommend them. Make sure your bottle is transparent. Uh, some of them can be frosted, you don't want that. So what I'm gonna do, again with my razor blade, uh, be really careful, don't cut yourself, use supervision, etc., etc. So I'm gonna make a slice in the bottle at the top. I'm gonna cut the top off. And so uh, I just made a slice. Now I'm gonna cut the whole top off. Try and get rid of any sharp edges. Uh, I'm gonna remove the thing just because I want to. You probably don't have to. I guess it would just help you be able to see a little bit better. Now, what you're gonna do, is so you're gonna turn it upside down. The top is now the bottom, the bottom is now the top. A lot of people get confused when I say that on my website, but that's what I mean. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut a few small circular holes in the top of the dome. This is to allow for airflow the hole is going to be about really going to be hard to see, but the hole is going to be about this big, a little bit, it's about the size of a dime. So I'm going to do that in each of the four corners. Try and not make them too big or too small. About the size of a dime is perfect. The bottle has some dents and like crevices in it, which can make it kind of hard to cut. So you just do that. Then we go over to the plant. The reason you want to not have super sharp edges is because these plants can be kind of big. Uh, depends on when you order the size of the plant. This one's pretty big. And the reason you don't want a smaller bottle is because, as you can see, I am already having trouble getting this in there. This dome is pretty much not required, honestly, unless you live in a extremely dry climate. Um, it's okay if the leaves touch the edge a little bit. You want the dome to be a little bit dry. This one has a ton of moisture beading on the edge of it because I just opened it. And I'm going to set it down like that. You can use something to elevate it if your plant is really tall. So like I would maybe get some paper towels and like put them under here. Um, you, should, you should really only use this at max at, uh, three days. And with a plant this size adapted to lower humidity, it's really not required. These plants grow in my room, which is 60% humidity. And even if you live in an extremely dry climate, it should be fine. As long as you give it the right lighting, um, the issue with domes is that when you go to take it off, it's just gonna mess up the plant a little bit. But, you know, that's how she looks. If you want to get real crazy with your setup, um, not required, but definitely helpful, is you can get one of these things. They're called a repeat cycle timer. 
This is a Spartan series brand, but there's also another brand called B-Link that makes some really good ones. I use uh, 20 seconds on. This one's set to 30 minutes off. I was just having it on too often. And um, so, you know, 20 seconds on, 20 minutes off on setting one of most fans is sufficient. So I have those on my hydroponic plants. I don't have them on my rooting plants, especially when they're rooting because it can be uh, too much air movement for them. So that's pretty much how I do it. And um, I guess that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching. And this is what you can expect for when you buy a plant from salviadivinorumplants.com. Thank you.